it is important that we understand what the legal, regulatory, compliance uh, and customer requirements are upon us in terms of information security, governance, risk and compliance. The 27001 standard requires that we document that and that we understand that and it is also good practice. We should know the legal and regulatory flame framework in which we operate. We should know what our customers are demanding of us where it is specific. We should be able to record that uh, and evidence that and articulate that. Now this is the first time we've come across a spreadsheet. So we're going to talk about document markup on spreadsheets touch on it very, very briefly. Basically, it's exactly the same as you would on Word. Either you can include it in the main tab or you can include it on a front page. In this one, we've done it on a front page, but we want the version, the document change, um, who modified it, and the date that they modified it. And we want a classification. Every document has to have classification markup. So our legal and regulatory register is gonna capture a number of different things. We're gonna look at the applicable standards to our organization. So what standards are applying to us? Um, why do they apply uh, and are they required, yes or no? So in this example, we've included 27001 PCI DSI, DSS and NIST. You could have SOC 1, SOC 2, uh, GDPR, data protection, uh, whatever it may be. Then we're gonna look at regulatory requirements. Regulatory requirements are requirements based uh, around industries. So, for example, within financial services or within gaming, you've got gambling regs, financial services regs. Anything that's a regulatory requirement that's placed upon you usually has a hint or, uh, or a requirement around information security or governance risk and compliance. So we would record that here. And it is also useful to record contractual requirements. These are specific requirements that go above and beyond that customers are Im imposing upon you. So what you find within financial services, for example, the large banks may be dictating specific things and clauses within contracts that it may be useful for you to record within a central register. So this is the first pass, uh, first pass page. Then what we're going to do is we're going to highlight and articulate all of the legal requirements that are placed on our business. Here is a caveat. We are not legal counsel. We're not lawyers. We're not solicitors. You should seek legal advice uh, when completing a document of this nature. In fact, it should actually be provided before you uh, and to you by your legal counsel. But in the absence of that, to meet a requirement, uh, we have a register of the common uh, legal frameworks that apply specifically within the UK with some wording, some applicability and whether or not it's required or not. So this isn't an exhaustive list. You would create your own list. I went through these. I just typed into uh, the Gov legislation, things like information security, data protection, and I came back with a list uh, and I've articulated those out. You can do that. You can do the same. I cannot emphasize enough. It is your legal and uh, your legal counsel's requirement to give you this and or to at least review it. The two columns that are important are the last assessed and next assessment dates. This shows that you, within the last 12 months of the person looking at this, uh, that this document has been reviewed and that you've uh, looked at that and you've assessed its applicability and that you also know when you're gonna assess it again next. It is useful in here actually to record laws that aren't applicable. Uh, the reason I would do that is because it shows that you've at least considered it. Sometimes auditors and, and third parties will say, well, what about this? You know, what about this particular piece of legislation? And it may be that you had considered it, considered it and discounted it because it didn't apply to you, but you had no way, uh, no evidences of, of that decision. So this is just one good way of doing that, having the laws that are in there that you think you may be asked about and then putting them as not required. So that is your legal and regulatory uh, and contractual register your applicable standards, your regulatory requirements, your contractual requirements from third parties, and then the laws that apply to you.